Hey, this is Kenyon Drake. You're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. It reminded me very much of, I don't know where my kids learned it, but they frequently, hey, what's up, YouTube? So one of their <laughs> channels does that all the time. and you One of the channels your kids watch? Yeah, yeah. So you gave me uh, I'll be filing, some flashbacks I'll be today. filing a uh, formal <laughs> copyright infringement against that channel. Thank you, Excuse Mike. me, sir. I am the one who Extends yells. the words a little longer and louder. Do you, <laughs> may, you may use whoa. <laughs> uh, but if you venture into a welcome. If you, yes. <laughs> there's any Oz, sir, you will hear from my <laughs> representation. My attorney. <laughs> Thursday, June 4th, Andy, Mike, and Jason, the fantasy footballers back with you. Got some buy or sell on the show today. Going to be answering some questions. Getting you ready to go. We're here, man. We're, we're in we're, June. We're at the place in time where you know oh, people so are weird. people so are doing weird. mock drafts. The UDK is up. The football is fewer than a hundred days away. That is actually the first I, time I've thought about it like that. That is wild. Yeah, I can't yeah. believe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jason is excited. You can follow the show on Twitter at the FF Ballers, YouTube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. Subscribe. Click the bell. Check us out on Instagram. We do have a giveaway right now. Giving away a signed Devontae Adams jersey. FootClanGiveaway.com if you want to enter over there. And as Jason said, the Ultimate Draft Kit is up. It's available. People are in there. They're using it. They're finding the very occasional teeny tiny bug every once in a while. Which we thank you for reporting. Yeah. Uh, big news. I think we had Mark Andrews age uh, off a year. So that is being fixed. Did we? Or is Mark Andrews just older than we all think he is? Maybe we know better. That's what I'm going to stick <laughs> with. UltimateDraftKit.com. And as a reminder, a dollar from every UDK is going to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Once again this year, it's a partnership that uh, we were able to uh, build last year with the, with the live tour, the UDK, continuing it in the UDK this year as well. One bit of uh, housekeeping. We are off next Monday, which means we will not be recording the Tuesday show ahead of time to get it out super early in the morning. This is kind of our uh, makeup off day for yep. the office because with the UDK releasing, we worked straight through uh, Memorial, day. Memorial Day. So this is our makeup day. And um, so the show will be out a couple hours later on Tuesday. But you'll be all right. Don't worry. The, you know, the Spitballers podcast will be up on time oh, on Monday. So you just, listen, you just listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> all right. Uh, you guys want to do some buy-sell? Yep. Buy or sell. Presented by Pristine Auction. All right, buy or sell Leonard Fournette as a top 20 fantasy running back in 2020. I was reading the question. I saw in my peripheral vision Mike shaking his head. I'm just shaking my head that this this is a really hard question, and this player in particular is going to be one of those flag-planting players where many of your league will just be out, and like where I stand right now, I feel like I'm out. Of of drafting him at any sort of high value round in my fantasy draft, but I like I'm, I'm saying that knowing I could be very very wrong about this, and if you are wrong about this, you will look the fool. When is the last time that an NFL top ten draft pick running back who's coming off of a thousand rushing yards and a hundred targets? Is unwanted in fantasy football, and that, but <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. That's what it is. Now, for me to answer this question, coming into this season, I saw him post draft. You know, pretty much, it seemed like a lock that he was. Also, going we're to talking be, about Leonard Fournette. I don't know if oh, we have ever we even, not named. I did. Player. I said it. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I said it. So, 
you know, he was a guy that I think had touchdown, positive touchdown regression coming, right? He had, yes. you know, almost 1,200 yards and three rushing touchdowns. That's anomalous. That's not something that you expect, you know, you, let's say he gets six touchdowns, which is a very mild number for someone with that kind of rushing volume. Mm -hmm. He would have been a top running back last year with that target volume. But I do not see him as a top 20 back this year. And my rationale for that is one that I fear. Because it's on the back of Chris Thompson that I'm afraid. The the 100 targets for Leonard Fournette were what made him valuable for fantasy. And, you know, we know how much more valuable a target is than a, than a carry for running backs in general. But then Chris Thompson is always injured. So me yeah. banking on Chris Thompson coming in, reunited with Jay uh, Gruden, to a role that was vacated when TJ Yeldon left. Leonard Fournette, that's not his specialty. That's not his skill set. So I've got Leonard Fournette going down to... 55 receptions, <laughs> or I'm sorry, <laughs> targets. Oh. Um, and I've got Chris Thompson eating in. But then if Chris Thompson gets injured, Leonard Fournette will be a stud, and Chris Thompson always gets injured. It's complicated yeah, in it's, Jacksonville. It's, it's, it's not just Chris Thompson for me. It, it's complicated. Uh, narrative street, whatever you want to call it. By the way, Fournette is the 24th overall player off the board right now. Makes him the running back 15 off the board. Okay. Um, but it's complicated because you spent the entire offseason with the – Leonard Fournette could be cut. Leonard Fournette could be traded. Leonard Fournette could be replaced in the draft. Leonard Fournette could be uh, marginalized due to Chris Thompson and the uh, maturation of maybe somebody behind him, whatever. And he's, he, and he's just like, yoo -hoo! He's just Dude, hanging out. Guess who's still here? Yeah. And, and, Eat it. And the only reason – I mean, the reason he was so prolific last year was what you said, catching the ball. I also think Jacksonville is not going to be a great team. They're not going to be ahead in a lot of games. They're not going to. They have a their defense is a shadow of the past. And if Fournette, you know, you say the positive touchdown regression. Well, okay. I know there's some optimism about Gardner, but it's far from a a, a guarantee. It's a tough division. This is one of the teams that I think might be at the bottom and not playing with the lead. And if they're not playing with the lead, and he's not the pass catcher anymore, trouble. It's debt. It's scary. And so it's more. Do you want to dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? That's how it feels. <laughs> sure. And coming into the year, he was an injury concern as well. Now, obviously, he held up last year. Yeah, and for all those reasons, that's there's so many red flags. So this is feels like a really high-risk player to draft, especially if he's going as the 24th player off the board. Risky, but your, your reward is if Leonard Fournette keeps his job, let me put it this way. If he fully keeps his job and Chris Thompson eats into his work, Leonard Fournette is still a top 15 running back. I would agree with that because he had a he's 25 years old, 24 years old. He had a great year last year, and he and has I'm, he's a good runner. And, and the depth chart there is one where you know unless they go out and sign someone new, Raquel Armstead is not a, a, a scary backup. It's it's going to be Leonard Fournette getting the ball, uh, you know, a, a ton of times. So yeah, I mean the volume should be there, but if he loses the pass catching, I. I don't think he's a guarantee for a top fifteen back. He would he'll be somebody I'm watching over the offseason that I, I don't have him ranked very high right now. I have him in my mid twenties. So if I'm playing in a best ball, I'm just I'm not taking that risk. But as we get closer to the season, if nothing has happened, then Leonard Fournette yeah, will it changes. he will go up in the rankings. Yeah. I'm gonna lower my projections though if he is cut. Yeah, that's okay. fair. That's, All right. No, that's, All right. And that's the kind of great <laughs> uh, bold. analysis you're gonna get in the ultimate draft kit. You know, is that you know, if he's cut, we're Update. gonna say He's got not going to have as many stats. Yeah, that's what we would do. Yeah, Boom. as many stats. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's a, he's a guy I'm willing to be wrong about this year. I think. Sure. So. And um, I have to correct myself here. I am technically a bite. He is my running back 18. I thought he was below running back 20. So to answer the question, I am buying, but obviously not with like a heart full of hope. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you're you're buying on this question. You're slightly below ADP. Yeah. Okay. That was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction, our great friends at Pristine Auction. You can use the code BALLERS. BALLERS. Get a $10 credit. Sports memorabilia over there. Autographed. Beautiful. Hang it on your wall. It's fun. Um, let's go ahead and do some mailbag. Mailbag. Bang ho, bang ho. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't. It's, I don't know, fine. man. It's fine. It's I fine. never know what's gonna come out. Uh, no, we don't either, and that's what makes it exciting and fun. 
You can visit the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button. If you have a question you want to send our way, anything you got, we're willing to answer. Redraft, auction, dynasty, commissioner. Life. Life questions. That's our mm. specialty. Yes. Uh, 302-464-TFFB is the voicemail hotline. Let's start there. Hey, ballers. Lou from Charlotte. I have a dynasty question for you guys. Is every year's rookie draft, should it be snake? Or regular descending order? What do you think? Rookie drafts in a dynasty should be uh, non-snake. Yeah, in, in linear. A, in a startup, when you don't know, yeah, th there's no reason, there's no difference between every owner. You want to even that out as much as possible. So you, you do want to snake a startup. But year in and year out from that point forward, you're trying – you know those rosters are locked. Those, you know who you draft, and the teams that stink and the teams that are great are going to have a multiple year run that way. And so I would suggest you try to do what's in the best interest of keeping the league even, which means a linear draft. If you finished in last place, you would get the first pick in each rookie round. Yep. yep. I've never participated in any dynasty rookie draft that was snake, for what it's worth. Scott Brooks. Question, has the lack of an offseason affected how you rank players for this coming season? It's a great question. It's been a strange year. It's been a strange offseason. It will continue to be. I think the answer is yes. Specific to, you know, rookies. We've talked about Justin Herbert, the opportunity to come in and compete for the job. Maybe, you know, less likely that a player like that can come in and, sure. and take over from day one. That's who it affects the most to me is rookies because I mean, those are the players who really need to get in there, learn the system, try and get up to something of NFL game speed. Does it affect your view of players returning from injury like a big bin coming back it's after fair. a year, uh, you know, players coming back trying to build a new rapport? I mean, he has different wide receivers sure. than he had the last time he left. It's, it's certainly a fair question. I mean, he's at least – it looks like anyways because we've seen a video and heard a couple – things on Twitter that he's out there practicing with some of his wide receivers. So it's not like they are getting no work done, but as of now, it hasn't, it hasn't changed a lot for me. Uh, Cause I'm usually out on rookie wide receivers for redraft. Anyways, it just kind of pushes me even further that direction right now. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it enters my mind when I rank, but I don't know that it's actually changed anything because we would guess, okay, rookies or, or veterans changing teams, you know, learning and anybody learning a new playbook. But then, you know, you have that every year. Uh, Tom Brady, perfect example. You could say, well, we got to change this. He doesn't have the same long off season, but we just, we don't know how it's going to affect. So for the most part, it hasn't factored into much, much of my rankings. Could be interesting with new head coaches. Matt, sure. Matt Rule in Carolina implementing a new system. We just don't know right now. How much camp time, preseason time, any of that stuff these these teams are going to have? Yeah, I'd rather base my rankings off of things that we know are historically accurate versus speculation that there there might be trouble yeah. in situation yeah. X, Y, or Z. I agree. Twitter question at King Bean says Dynasty trade Adam Thielen or J.K. or for J.K. Dobbins. Oh, yeah, this is a tough one. The known for the unknown, the old for the young. The relevant the, now versus the relevant later, probably. Absolutely. And I think that, to me, answers this question. It's, uh, you know, it's not a, a trade. It, this is completely tem team dependent. Uh, and I know sometimes that's a, a fluffy answer. But the reality here is I would trade J.K. Dobbins for Adam Thielen if I am a contender right now in need of maybe wide receiver help. And I can go out and try to win a championship this year. And if I'm not really contending and I need to look for the future, I would trade Adam Thielen for J.K. Dobbins in a heartbeat. I would say if I have Dobbins, I'm probably not trading for Thielen. I think I can get a younger wide receiver, a better – Adam Thielen's great. But he's going to be 30 when the year starts. His contract situation, he's, he's about to be past the, the very big commitment from the team. Uh, like they could choose to move on in a year or two years, uh, just looking at his dead cap situation. And I am all in, all in on J.K. Dobbins 
next year. He might take the job this year. I doubt it. I think Ingram still has. I doubt it enough. as well. But I next year it's going to be J.K. Dobbins as, as the as the main runner for for the Baltimore Ravens. That's how I'm going to project it, and he is going to be amazing for there fantasy is, football. There is still the chance that Ingram's back though next year. There, yes. So there, there is. I mean, there's not a guaranteed path for Do- like I, I'm with you, Mike. I think it's a very, you know, this year. No, probably not a great every week start. And Mark Ingram, just to clarify, Mark Ingram will turn 31 in December. Yes. So it, but next, he was super productive for them. I'm just yes, saying, if yes. they're a, if they're a Super Bowl contending team, Ingram's still under contract. Now they they could get out of it, but he's still under contract for 2021. Is all I'm saying. So there is a path where you sure. make that decision. And you are in a Derrick Henry situation <laughs> right, okay. yeah, where fair. you're three years out. So, you know. Well, in a, so to answer the question, not just team specific, you're in a dynasty startup draft. Yeah, I think I'll take I'll take Thielen. I'll take. Uh, I would take Dobbins. I think I would take Dobbins in a startup as well. Okay. Twitter question from Jace. Redraft league question here. So last year we used $150 worth of fab. Do you think we should raise it to 200 or lower it to 100 It makes... <laughs> Absolutely, I've no got an difference. idea. Raise it to fifteen thousand. <laughs> you get to spend so much money here. Uh, this is the only relevant answer possible, and it's very minutely relevant. If you go to a hundred dollars, it is easy to extrapolate percentage based advice. So if we say, <laughs> you know, it, yeah. you, you want, I would, I would pay ten percent of my budget. Well, there you go. It's ten. It's ten dollars. We we do a hundred dollar fab budget in our leagues but it really is inconsequential and does not matter it can be any number you would like do you know what 10 percent of 150 is 15 <laughs> i did it uh it might be a good time i mean this is the the off-season shows i don't want to throw that out there without considering newer players new listeners maybe talk for a moment about what fab is maybe you've played in a league and all you do is you say what what in the world are they talking about sure. Uh, we normally have rolling waivers every week when the waivers come out. It's just whatever team is in last place gets first dibs on the waiver um, list. Yeah, so a quick summary is the FAB or free agent acquisition budget, or as some out there call it, FOB. Yeah. Ridiculous people. Ridiculous. JJ, I'm talking to you. They drive uh, sobs. <laughs> mm. uh, it's It's a system for... Uh, how you handle the waivers, adding player, adding free agents off of the waiver wire. You can either use the rolling waivers, the, it's kind of the old school. You're just in an order. You line up in an orderly fashion. If you have the first choice, no one else has a chance to get the first player. But if you give everyone this fab budget, everyone has an equal opportunity, at least at the beginning of the season, to go after anyone they want on the waivers, and you can prioritize this budget however you see fit throughout the entire year and it adds it adds a new element of strategy to the game of adding players off the waiver wire and more importantly to me it adds fairness and adds a bunch of fun that's that's it for me i mean it's just a far more fun system you can say whatever you want about fairness and uh you know it being better or worse but there's no there's no debate that it it's more fun yep. to have uh, you know all these different uh, I'm ideas blind bidding and against blind people. bidding and you know versus just you get him and then I get my pick yeah then. for an example just to throw the hundred dollar budget let's say we all had a hundred dollar budget and McCall Hardman wasn't drafted and he's sitting out there on waiver wire after week one we're all privately deciding maybe I'm saying oh I'm, I'm willing to spend fifteen dollars I bid fifteen for McCall Hardman Jason bids eight Mike bids sixteen when waivers run at that time every single day when they run Mike's gonna win. And I'm gonna cry because I will have been one dollar <laughs> below, and he will uh, mock me, and it will make my league better. Or, right? or he bids eighty eight dollars, and he gets them. Yeah. And then Harvin doesn't do anything. And yeah. He's wasted his budget. Also but, worth knowing, and this is very, uh, I, I think obvious to most. But I remember in the very, very beginning being worried. This is a virtual budget. You're not, you're not coming out of your <laughs> that's, pockets. To, that's true. You know, I look. I, if you want to go fiat, I don't care. Yeah. That's your league. That's fun in a paid league. That's true. All right. Before I get to the next question, I want to thank today's sponsor, Omaha Steaks. Omaha! Father, Father's Day is coming up. Give Dad the gift he really wants this year. Perfectly aged, tender steaks. Yes, I do. 
Uh, Omaha Steaks will deliver the world's best steaks and a huge variety of other favorites. Mike just got uh, 40,000 burgers from Omaha Steaks. I'm down to 5,000. Okay. I was They've been ask flying you. off the shelves. <laughs> of your own shelf. Flying off your yeah. own shelf. <laughs> Uh, Omaha Steaks delivers guaranteed quality and safety with each and every order. So send dad a gift of food that he will love this year. Right now, Omaha Steaks, they're offering our listeners access to a variety of amazing packages that are perfect to send dad for Father's Day. I just saw one come through on Twitter. Somebody took a little picture of the package they just got. And I want them to send me one. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code footballers in the search bar. You'll see a great a uh, number of options available, many that include free shipping and a free one-pound package of their perfectly cured, incredibly thick applewood smoked steak cut bacon. Oh. There are many packages available that are perfect for dad, and they're all ready to be shipped straight to his door in time for Father's Day. Visit omahasteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar to shop for Father's Day today. All right. Let's go... To an Instagram question, ATM1523 says, do you see a scenario where Cam Akers finishes the season in the top 15 at the running back position? In your opinion, what is his ceiling and what is his floor? Certainly there's a scenario where he's a top 15 running back. We've we've seen that team and we've seen Sean McVay commit to one running back. And that uh, when, when Todd Gurley was getting that incredible volume, he was solid for fantasy. Even last year, when Todd Gurley wasn't necessarily efficient, the Rams weren't the high-flying offense we had seen. Guess who's still good for fantasy? The running back who's on the field all the time, getting all the work, getting all the goal line carries. So yes, there is there is a world where Cam Akers is the is the the best rookie running back of this season. Like even better than Clyde Edwards Alaire. It, it's possible. Unlikely is unlikely to me because I see his I'm projecting him more in a in a timeshare and possibly a three running back timeshare. Jay, how are you how did you go about statting Cam Akers? So I, I statted him as as the leader of this backfield, but I did not have the Rams converting the Todd Gurley role in its entirety. So I would say the the odds on highest probability is that he is a, a you know a, a solid to low end uh, RB two because he's getting enough work. His that's ceiling your, that's your ceiling for him. No, no, that's just the highest probability. His ceiling is that that's he a, that's a pretty good spot to be if he you think he's an RB two takes over uh, the Todd Gurley role and comes in and is utilized in that way. But if he does, I just want to point out last year Todd Gurley's role was still you know, a, a, a very large role. And he finished as the running back 14. And that was with a ton of touchdowns coming yeah, his way. So I, I think the ceiling for Cam Akers is not an RB one, but I think his floor is, is, is higher than most of the rookie running backs, because I do expect him to have the primary job in the backfield, but the offensive line is still bad. Okay. All right. Colton in Alexandria, Michigan says, who should I draft? Jared Kuk? Jared Kuk. Or Noah? Fantastic. 2020 <laughs> season PPR league. Uh, I haven't heard that PPR in a while. League. Noah Fantastic? Yeah. I got to bring it back because he's- Fantastic. He's on our- uh, I he snuck is? him into our breakout. You did. Snuck, well, snuck when him we in weren't there. looking. I know. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think the answer here is Jared Cook. Right? Oh, Yes. It's, it's Jared Cook. I feel very strongly about this. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree as well. I mean, I do think that uh, in a full PPR, the, this person said it's PPR league, the opportunity for Fant to have more targets and be more an integral part of the Broncos' op offense is there. But I would certainly say by the end of the year, the touchdowns are going to be more on the Jared Cook side. Uh, so I, I would lean Jared Cook and uh, take the <laughs> Saints offense and Drew Brees. Got to do your cook by the book. Yeah, you got to cook by the book. Uh, Jared Cook, 43 receptions last year. No offense, 40 receptions last year. Twitter question, at Lanky95, Dynasty, half point. Terry McLaurin? Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm Next sorry. Next question. Sorry. <laughs> or Mark Andrews. Ooh. Dynasty, half point, Ooh. PPR. That's... McLaurin or Mark Andrews? Mm. 
That's mm. pretty easy, I think, for me. Oh, okay. And, and you say that, and yet I do not know which name you are about to Interesting. utter. Yeah, it's I not, not easy know. to me. It I is want, not easy for me either. I mean, so this, this is a dynasty league. You've got these guys for a long time. Both are young. Um, but Terry McLaurin, to me, is, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I would take the Terry McLaurin side. If okay. I could trade Mark Andrews for Terry McLaurin, I would do that because I think I can piece together. Well, you trade Mar- Mark Andrews oh, for, for John up. Ross. Shut I mean, you, you'd <laughs> let go of Mark this, Andrews at a moment's you, notice. You, you, you're a dirty, dirty person for bringing <laughs> that up, Andy. That was years ago. And yes, I traded. Uh, year. I have a year ago. It was Look, the moral of the story is that I have season. Mark Andrews. And yes. you have John Ross. That is correct. Well, let me ask you this. How did it work out for us in that dynasty league? Which did one of us win the championship? Oh gosh. Because I did <laughs> back to back. So I'm okay. Did can... one of us? Because I did. Yes. <laughs> um, the turd. But here I would take I would oh. take Terry McLaurin. So you guys th- It's difficult because uh, Mark Andrews is on one of the best teams in football. He's he's young. He he's a difference maker at the position. I feel like if you ask the same question with, you know, Travis Kelsey 2 or 3 years ago age-wise, sure. you probably would smash the Travis Kelsey button. So maybe we aren't, uh, you know, appropriating that value to Andrews and it just depends. I mean, I love Terry McLaurin, but talk about diametrically different teams right now well and that's why it's difficult for me because mark andrews like you said he's the difference maker at a position in a dynasty league there aren't very many difference making tight ends i mean it's the same in redraft you know we have maybe four players at the tight end position every year where you just you plug them in and you're happy the vast majority of the time because they go out there and they put up big fantasy numbers it's how do you view terry mclaurin where where is he going if did you see the best of Terry McLaurin last year as a rookie, his quarterback situation is uh, questionable at best. They're they are. Uh, you'll be interested to know. Mark Andrews is younger than Terry McLaurin. Oh my gosh! Mark Andrews he did come is, in as a baby boy. Mark that Andrews is, is twenty three years old. Terry, although, Mc, Terry McLaurin is twenty four. Uh, did you see the the newest comp from head coach Ron Rivera? He's throwing he's throwing comps out what? willy-nilly. Let me think. The first one, he's got Christian McCaffrey already with Antonio Gibson. That is correct. Okay, so that comp was perfect. So this is for Terry McLaurin? Yes. Uh, it, I haven't seen it, but I would guess it would be Steve Smith. Oh, I'm going to go no. Jerry Rice. <laughs> <laughs> Just go. I'm no. going Jerry. No, it was, no, it's a recent. It's, it's DJ Moore. And DJ oh, Moore... Sorry. Because Rivera was there. I was just, he's just competent. I feel like DJ Moore is so young, you need to comp him to somebody still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just talking skill set. Sure. And, and sure. DJ Moore had a real breakout season last year. Not that McLaurin didn't. It is I, very hard. I think I'm still going to take Terry McLaurin here, but that's okay. that's tough. You need, usually in a dynasty league, Multiple, you're going to need yeah. four good young wide receivers and only need to fill one tight end spot. I wish my tight end was stronger in the aforementioned uh, champ champ dynasty league, but you, <laughs> but know, you did win the championship right and after that, trading Mark Andrews away for John Ross. Yes. And you know, it's, it's because I've to got me. four stud wide receivers. My, my tight end position is, I mean, I've got, we got Jack Doyle. Uh, yeah. Jack Doyle and fan, Hayden right? Hurst. And I, I do have no fan yeah. Eric Ebron, but it's just piecing together a start. Every week, just go trade for Blake Jarwin, who will turn into Mark Andrews. This I'm year. guessing you have Blake Jarwin, Mike. Look, I cannot confirm nor <laughs> deny. <laughs> I also have I, Terry McLaurin. I can tell you, we will not be having negotiations after this show. <laughs> I'm fine with my slew of five Blake Jarwins. Oh, I have you think already. I'm, you think I'm trading Blake Jarwin after <laughs> all this time? <laughs> not happening. How dare you even ask? This is just getting me excited for another season oh, of Dynasty. Yes. Fantasy football is super fun. Next question. Well, right before the show, we were uh, there's some rumors about Raheem Mostert getting paid, uh, oh, extended. Get that money, man. And uh, I just got him in the Dynasty League, and that would make me feel very good yeah. about that acquisition. All right. Is it a bad idea to take Justin Jefferson over Jerry Judy in my rookie draft? Asks Joseph Flanagan. Hmm. It's a lot of J's. No. No, I wouldn't. But this is where you have to pick the 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 wide receiver prospect you prefer, the offense you prefer. Kirk They're Cousins both, versus exactly Drew, Kirk, Drew Locke. Yeah, I mean, I I would take Jerry Judy because of the talent, but the situation is far better 
for a very good Justin Jefferson. So yeah. you, you both you. should start from day one. Yes. I would just highlight the fact of a few years ago, there were three wide receivers and they were all taken in the first round. Uh, we had. Uh, You're talking about the Corey Davis we, year? We're talking about, no, Laquan Treadwell. Uh, uh, now I'm struggling to even was to that think of John anybody's Ross name. Year or no, the no. Uh, Corey Coleman. Yeah, Corey Coleman. Oh. And, and Josh Doxson. Yeah. And you Boop. know. And those were all consensus top four picks behind Zeke. Now, there was a wide receiver that year who was drafted by a team in the second round, so he fell. That receiver is Michael Thomas. You do you, man. <laughs> so if you that's believe like, in Justin Jefferson. That's what I feel I'm like saying. if you clipped that section of this show out to highlight what rookie draft pick trading mm -hmm. you know variation can become, you know you you. You could yes. end up with crap. Yes, Trade do, do not highlight that I took Doxon over Michael Thomas. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that's you did. Good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, of th course you th did. Because is, everybody did. This yes. is why we usually will err on the side of taking the known vet over the higher potential rookie because the the hit rate of rookies is not what you think it is. Oh right? man, and I brought up Corey Davis and yes, Justin Blackman, Michael Floyd. Mm -hmm. There have been some, tough, some big old Nikhil dynasty Harry. whiffs. So far. TBD, TBD, yeah. TBD, but, yeah. but yes, so far. Yes, feels, no. It feels bad right now that you could have drafted Josh Jacobs. Yes, no question. No question. And the pathway for Has... Harry to make you feel okay. <laughs> or A.J. Brown. Or, you know, oh. just, ah! You're just a cruel beast dynasty. Fantasy the, football is yes. no fun. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> The real key is you've got to take all the great players and then let the other the bad ones oh, go by. That is one of the best strategies that we adhere to. All right. Randall wants to know what, what round you would consider Devin Singletary an actual value. Ooh, a value. Where, well, I'll tell you where he's off, going. First off, where is he going? I will tell you right now. 38th overall pick, RB21. Is that? So fourth round. Playing a little ADP price check here. Are you? I'm okay with that. I think I am too. I'm okay with Devin Singletary. I, I know that the... There, there is a groundswell for Zach Moss, and I think it's it's fair that they they were both third round players. But I still I think that Singletary has actually proven it on the NFL field. I think he will be the leader of the timeshare, and I I still have Singletary coming through and being a good fantasy player as well. So a value, you know, fifth round. If if you get him in the fifth, I think you you got a very nice value because I would take him at at cost in the fourth round. Now yeah, he's I mean, going around David Johnson, James Conner. David Montgomery, Love Bell, Raheem Mostert. So, well, uh, yeah, okay, okay. I <laughs> I need to change that now, answer. Bell, Bell's four picks ahead of him. Okay, he's directly ahead of David Johnson though in best ball ADP right now. He's directly ahead of James Conner. Yeah, I feel like I would take those two guys above. Singletary. Would you take? I mean, I'd take David Montgomery over Singletary. I, I had to make that decision in one of my leagues. I would as well. This is what I was going to bring up. It's not about what round a right. guy is a value. It's about where does he slot in among other people in tiers. You know, we, we we look at tier based yeah. drafting, and I don't see him as a value ahead of David Johnson and David Montgomery and Agreed. these other guys. But he he's not an afterthought. I think he can be. Uh, you know, if I could I, wait around and get David Montgomery, David Montgomery, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So where he's currently going is is not a good enough value. That's fair. All right. Uh, the <laughs> this question comes in from Gus Bosanuski. <laughs> Um, Bonjour. And he asks about Gus Edwards, saying, uh, "Are both Gus Edwards and Justice Hill drops in Dynasty now?" I would not drop them. Um, Agreed. But I understand <laughs> the question. Uh, I have Justice Hill in a, in a league, and to me, he is pretty much dead to me. But one injury at a, a fickle running back position for a team that yes. runs the ball so much, it's really hard to just completely give up on those guys. Also, tell us what your knuckles feel, Andy. <laughs> oh, my God. It just exploded. Are we popping our knuckles? Is that what we're doing now? <laughs> Sorry. This is He reads the bones. Oh, my this goodness. Is, oh, yeah. It's nice a vision cool. of... What did Gus, Gus Edwards was like over five a carry last year? Gus Edwards was awesome he last just, year. Like, fourth quarter Gus was just owning the, the NFL. Bus, I think he so had what? 133 carries. Yeah. If I, That's a decent amount of carries to yeah. run at five point something a clip. But he's a but he was irrelevant, right? You, you're not playing It him. was relevant to your point that if an injury happened, 
this team could trust Gus Edwards over J.K. Dobbins. It's very possible. Instantly. Because you might, you know, just in the way the offense functions and runs and third downs and all those things, like Gus, like you said, don't cut him. If an injury happens, he may become. Yeah, but yeah, he's at the I bottom agree. of your bench. Sure. Is he lower than Justice Hill? No, I, I think Justice Hill is the lowest to me. Mm. Those two players threaten year one Dobbins oh, for sure. redraft views. Yes, for sure. I do think Dobbins is going to dominate, though. Not year one. Would you cut Darwin Thompson? Yeah. That's the other question. Darwin Thompson and Justice Hill are virtually identical to me. You don't have to, but... They're I mean, the they're the fourth but guy. You might want to? Oh, I, I'm saying like maybe there's maybe there's a rookie chilling on your uh, your waiver or like uh, like. Would you rather have Adam the, Troutman, the the tight end for New Orleans? I would rather drop Darwin Thompson and and put him on my bench and see if he develops. Would you rather have Darius Geis on your bench than all three of those players? Yes, yes for sure. He has the opportunity yes. to be the the starter for his franchise this season. All right, Facebook question from Steven. Earliest you would reach on a player like Madison or Hunt when using a first rounder on Cook or Chubb? Hmm. Well, I think I think there is a differentiation there between Madison and Hunt, tier wise. Yeah. Hunt has a potential week to week utility, you know, running back three, flex. Like you're not starting Madison week Correct. to week, right? Well, at least you wouldn't have last year. I can't. It, it it's hard change. to. It yeah, could change, but it at this point, if you're projecting the change, it's up off of what. Yeah, you have evidence. no reason to to do. Do that. you reach for Hunt if you're the Chubb owner, or do you <sighs> find yourself stuck in a place where all of a sudden you're starting two Browns running backs every single week? Yeah, I would. I think I would prefer to be one or the other. I mean, you're you're not going to want to start them both. I mean, you're you're limiting your upside doing that. You're limiting your upside. Uh, on a week to week basis, having them both on your team, where that's a roster spot that you can't be getting points from another NFL team. So I would prefer not to have both of them. Madison and Dalvin Cook, that's more of a, it's more of a handcuff situation <laughs> where Madison would be amazing if Dalvin Cook misses time. Kareem uh, Hunt is going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of this season. What do you guys see as his future in Dynasty? I think it depends a lot on yeah. this season to me. my If I had to handicap it right now, I don't think he's going to get a lead back job again. Okay. I think he will, but he will he won't get a, a bunch of money. I think he won't. <laughs> but fight, I think fight, he fight, will. Fight. Uh, you know, respect my thoughts. <laughs> and I, I think he... Might. <laughs> Welcome to the fantasy footballers. Were you happy with having Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman nope. together for many years? Because Coleman was yeah. standalone. Uh, you know, he went in the fifth round, sixth round for yeah. two or three years in a row. I think the the point here is that you don't need to reach for Hunt if you have Chubb. It's not a negative to have both. He's still a handcuff and a usable asset and an unrestricted free agent at age twenty six. So. Hunt has standalone value, but that just because you have Chubb does not mean you need to draft Hunt over people that have a better fantasy yes. outlook that are going to help your team at that position or others. Yeah, and another way to think about that is, you know, you don't need to reach for Hunt if you could draft another player that you could start every week anyways. I mean, yep. if you look at Hunt and he may end up not being a weekly start, he might end up being just a player that – when Chubb goes down, gives you great value. If he goes down. Sure. Instagram question from Greg. As a wide receiver, too, for your roster, do you prefer Robert Woods or Calvin Ridley? Oof. Uh, Oof. I love both of these players this year. Robert Woods is my selection here, though. I, I love the upside of Ridley. I think Woods is locked. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm identical to you. I, you know, as my wide receiver, too, I want consistency. I want high targets. And while, while I think Ridley's ceiling is is actually higher than Robert Woods, Robert Woods is very very safe to me. And if I can have him as my wide receiver too, going out there and getting 130 plus targets, pretty much guaranteed, barring injury, I love having that kind of consistency in that slot on my fantasy roster. Give me Woods. 
Instagram from Garrett Johnston. Would you? Uh, when would you be okay taking a chance on Carry On? I uh, I recuse I recuse myself I recuse myself from this conversation I am not fair to listen to, um, I mean here's I say I recuse myself and then I just want yeah, to please, immediately give my opinion because we want your opinion my I just want him to sit there my redraft look on Carry On Johnson is as a handcuff I don't usually even draft handcuffs. Um, I think he'll be more involved, but not involved enough where you're going to start him on a weekly basis, similar to you know a, a Kareem Hunt type. Um, so in redraft, I'm not really looking for him. I do still absolutely believe in the talent of Carryon Johnson, and he is so young that I think he will get another contract. I like him more in Dynasty than I do in a redraft. Another contract where? On another team? On another team. The Detroit Lions do not want him. I, I just if he goes to another team. It's a hard, hard situation harder, to imagine him having a, a, a running. Look, I, I think that through the first half of the season, when you look at the uh, rushing attempts on the ground for Detroit, Carrion Johnson will have more than DeAndre Swift when you reach the middle point in the season. So I think that he could have some interesting later round beginning of season value. But do you want 55% of the Detroit Lions rushing <laughs> attack? <laughs> Ooh. I don't want 100% of their That's rushing. my point. <laughs> that, that's exactly my point. If you don't want pretty much all of it, now it's split. I don't really want the lead dog. If I think the lead dog is Swift, I don't really want him. If I think the lead dog is Carry On, yeah, I don't I, really want him. But I, at what point are you willing to say, okay, the, the value is there? I'll draft Carry On Johnson and see what happens. Ninth round? Tenth sure. round? I have no idea where he's going. Sure. I have to install software to black his name out uh, <laughs> just so I don't see him. He's, he's going not available. 91st for overall pick right now, running by 39. He's in the Philip Lindsay, Tariq Cohen category. That's fair. Which is totally fair. Yep. Oh, man. I would take But him I, don't, I don't agree. I, would, I, I would don't agree with, with the dynasty guys. value. I don't agree with him I know you don't. dynasty value. I know you don't. I'm well aware that you think that his well, I just ability don't know how to get a better job in the future is that 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 would not happen. I and I understand that argument. I'm basing it on talent that I think other evaluators agree with and would give him a shot. Bad franchises like that they they well, lose guys they draft But who why give good a guy a shot that was uh, a guy that's hurt is my point. Like if he's been traditionally hurt, well over the next couple of years he could So he could be you the Tevin Coleman type of contract leaving yes, Detroit and then exactly. he's been healthy. Okay. I I know you think that I don't like Carry on Johnson. No, I know that I you just, hate relative my love to of you. Johnson. It seems like hate. Yeah, but comparatively speaking, like to the world, it's just new. It's just regular carry on valuation. Right. Sure. No, I get that. Um, That's why I recused myself and did not weigh in at all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Twitter question from uh, Abe. He says, "How do you begin your process of statting out players?" Uh, we probably all have slightly. Sure. The same answer, but slightly different answer too. Uh, we do it slightly differently. Yeah, I mean, for for me, I know I know <laughs> how I begin the process. I, we go to team by team, and depending on the team, I look at the quarterback situation first, and I say, do I know what this quarterback does, will do, his range of outcomes? Is this Matt Ryan? I know what Matt Ryan is going to pretty much throw for about yardage wise, about completion percentage. You know, I I know I'm I'm confident in what he brings to the table. As opposed to uh, Josh Allen, uh, Josh Allen, I go, I don't, I don't know. So for me, when I stat these teams out, if the quarterback is a is a known commodity as a veteran, I start there, and I look at what I expect his team, his offense as a whole, and and stat him out, and then I fill in the weapons to match what I believe the quarterback's reliability is. On the flip side, if it's a quarterback that I do not have a lot of confidence in knowing what the direction is i kind of look at the weapons first and stat them out to give me an idea of what i believe the outcome will be for the quarterback do you guys consider matt ryan to be vanilla yeah absolutely so like vanilla ice yes i would call yeah yeah I, that's fair yeah I'm, i mean i get i, I get it because maddie maddie ice but maddie ice is already such a dumb nickname yeah you've always <laughs> really hated that well just because it's so it. dumb you hate it too. Yes. Oh, I, it it is not my favorite. Fal like, Falcons fans, let us know how you feel about that nickname, or whether you the, think you've got a guy with ice in his well, veins. No, but that's my biggest problem with it. This is a guy who does not have ice in his veins. Yeah. When he's down, he folds. Well, 
That's my. Let's just like I had an MVP season. Puts up consistently gaudy numbers. Yes, but that's but the way he does it. He's Super not Bowl. one of those guys when you're down that you want the ball in his hands and you believe. It. I would that's, say for some reason he doesn't feel that way. Yeah, and that's it's the not, ice in the veins, the the cold blooded. Just that's why he gives it to other players. You know what it is? It just comes down to that red zone interception problem. Like you drive down, he w- he's driven down the field in lots yep. of game winning situations, but then it's like closing the deal. Yeah, you you reminded me there was a time of uh, I don't know how much I pushed it on the show, but I was I referred to him as Manila Ice because mm. he reminded me of a like a Manila envelope. I do not remember that. That seems like not something I want to be compared to. A Manila oh, yeah. envelope. Oh no, yeah, I didn't. I, didn't I mean, say there's it a was. lot of utility in is Manila it, env- it, envelope. Is, is try and get one of those things open. Is it always? Is it his fault that Julio has has uh, the touchdown problems? I, that's that's an interesting question. Chicken or egg? There, I have no yes, idea. Yes, of course it is. <laughs> Who, uh, here's what I can promise: Julio Jones is not the problem for his <laughs> touchdowns. <laughs> Julio Jones can catch touchdowns and is amazing. So he is Julio is not the reason for it. So yeah, I'm gonna well, put it on. I'm gonna put it on Matt Ryan. Is okay. is Matt Ryan like the Madden player? He's like this. This play just works too well. So I need to go over here to my third they're read. Gonna, they're going to always think it's coming here, so I'm never yeah. going to do it. I do feel like that happens with Julio a lot. <laughs> They'll I, never see this I, coming. And so maybe it's not Matt Ryan or it's Julio. Maybe it's, it's – Check down to tight end. It's the they've had offensive a lot of, coordinator. They've had a lot of different coordinators where Matt Ryan does the same thing. Yeah, but these guys are super smart. Yeah. They go away from the best weapon around the goal. <laughs> <laughs> I would throw it to him. I throw him the ball. Th- He's good. I He's good at football. I want to see a game where every single target. Yeah. Every target. Just let's find out what happens. One game. Throw every target to Julio Jones or Michael Thomas the, 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 when you've got the great See if see if they can stop you. Yes. Well, Julio is so much physically bigger than people anyways. I yes. mean, you could really do that on every play. I think Matt Ryan has tried a, a couple games. Yeah. They did but that with he's, Brandon Marshall. He's gotten, he's gotten close, but I want every target. 100% target share in a game. And tell him. Tell him before <laughs> they get at the coin flip, every target's going to Julio Jones. What are you going to do about it? Yes, tell the defense. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, what about dump offs? Would that would that be allowed? Or just wide receiver, you know, d- deeper to targets? Are you, oh, no. It's, it's, it's all allowed. It's everything. But okay. you got to audible to it at the line every time. Julio. <laughs> I mean, it reminds me of like back on on old NBA games where you're like, what I would be LeBron. I'm like, you know what? You know who's scoring every point this game? LeBron. (laughs) Try and stop this. Yeah. It'd be be fun. It'd be a good time. (laughs) All right. That does it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Thank you for tuning in, supporting the podcast. We uh, will be back with you on Tuesday next week. Enjoy the weekend. Mm -hmm. Stay safe out there. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, as always, do never, ever forget about Omaha Steaks delivering guaranteed quality and safety with every order. Make Father's Day simple this year. Send Dad the gift he actually wants, perfectly aged Omaha Steaks, and get free shipping and free steak cut bacon with select packages. Go to omahasteaks.com, type footballers in the search bar to see their variety of amazing packages.